Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, Wilson's World Homeschool right here. And this one, uh, I got to be honest, this one's a little personal for me. Uh, that is Davis uh, right there, Museum of Life and Science in Durham, North Carolina. And you guys have been following me for a while. You know, I love space. I, I share my love of science and space with you. And I was asked a, a couple weeks back, I would do one of these things in one of the schools. What, how did you get into NASA and science so much? Well, it's because of the Museum of Life and Science in Durham, North Carolina. Davis, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on and talking about our uh, virtual camps. So listen, I just want to make sure all the Charlotte people know, I'm going to talk about how great your museum is and how I loved it and everything. Here's the thing now with this virtual world, <laughs> people in Charlotte, people anywhere, people wherever you're watching, Hickory or South Carolina or whatever, you can be a part of the Museum of Life and Science in Durham with your, with your stay at home and virtual camps, right? That's exactly right. So we're putting on virtual camps that people can access really from anywhere in the world. Uh, as long as they're aware that we are in the Eastern time zone, they're able to join us. <laughs> That's right. Well, I think it's pretty cool. And you're trying to kind of replicate the, you know, what would normally be the, 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 the camp experience here kind of all throughout the day. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, when, uh, obviously with the coronavirus, it kind of threw everybody's world uh, upside down a little bit. And while we know that teachers have done an amazing job with all the virtual learning that they've been doing, we still know that there's a real need for camps. It's a place for children to meet new kids that they're not with the rest of the year and have new experiences. And so that was one of the guiding principles for these camps that we've developed. We really wanted to boost communication between campers, especially with campers who may not have met. Uh, my dream is that they're setting up virtual play dates by the end of this week. So that, that's kind of one of the, the guiding principles for these camps. Hey, we were we were playing Pictionary and all that uh, virtually here just, to, just a, a while back. So this is kind of some cool stuff. We're going to have a link up at WCCBCharlotte.com. People can find more info. But seriously, if you're watching this here in this part of North Carolina, you can be in a camp, your kids can, Great. in Durham over there. And I'm gonna tell you more here in just a little bit about why I'm such a huge fan of this museum. Where can people go and, and get more details and see everything? So you can definitely, you can visit our website. That website is summercamp at, or dot lifeandscience.org. You can check that website out. All of our information about our uh, virtual camps and our in-person camps are at that website. Like I said, we'll have that linked up for you. Stay tuned. I'm going to geek out on this guy coming up here in just a little bit and talk about just my experience as a kid going to this awesome museum that I love, the Museum of Life and Science up in Durham. We got more Wilson's World Homeschool coming up in just a few. Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Wilson's World Homeschool. Now, listen, I know when you're watching these shows, you can tell when I'm really excited about something and my voice gets excited. I'm going to try and be nice and calm and cool, okay? If you weren't watching the last segment, uh, that's, that's Davis right there, Museum of Life and Science in Durham. Uh, I lived in Durham when I was younger, and my love of NASA and science and all that really came from the Museum of Life and Science. They had a huge space display. They had a rocket. They had the Apollo. They, it was so cool. You'd walk in, and there was like this big, one of the parachutes from Apollo, and it's, it's a little bit different now, but you've still got just some amazing space stuff there, right? We sure do. Yeah, we have uh, one of the lunar landers or a model of one of the lunar landers. We have uh, some of the spacesuits that were used in some of the original missions. We have, yeah, uh, we also have one of the big rocket boosters upright still out in front of our museum. No, I, 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 I love this museum. They got a little train there and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully when things get back to normal, you can go and check it out. But go online and check out the space stuff because I talk about that a lot and I cannot tell you just the impact, but also just how cool it is that this museum in North Carolina had access to just some really amazing pieces of the space program and you've had it for, I know that there were some connections there with NASA directly and the Museum of Life and Science. People might not realize just everything that you have there in the collection. We do, we have a lot of space stuff, not to mention we have uh, an amazing uh, group of animals that we have yeah. on site. We have red wolves and bears, all kinds of things like I that. I forgot about the red wolves. Yeah, the red wolves yeah. are a good one. That's some good yeah. stuff. And you can find out more about this with the summer camps. That's kind of one of the, besides me just wanting to geek out and talk to someone at the museum that I love. This <laughs> yeah. um, people in the Charlotte area get really anywhere across the Southeast mm -hmm. can be a part of the Museum of Life and Science summer camps, right? That's absolutely correct. And we actually have made it a point to connect people to our museum through these so no matter where you are, twice a week, we have a couple of programs 
that either have our uh, children interacting with some of the animals that we use for our programs. We also do behind the scenes tour today. In fact, we're going to do a behind the scenes tour of our butterfly house uh, where we'll get to see some of the, the animals in the back and uh, some of the spaces that we use to kind of prepare for those things. So a long, 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 you'd be able to drive down the street. Okay. And there would just be this dinosaur in the yep. woods and it was yep. part of the dino walk and you can go and see it. It's, it's not quite nothing as how it was when I was younger, but it is pretty cool. They got a lot of dinosaur stuff, but I cannot tell you just my love of dinosaurs walking through the woods and they had this, it was a huge model. It's when you're younger, man, things seem so much big, but this was really big. Yeah. That brontosaurus is still actually there on the trail across the street. It's available for anybody to see. I truly, um, truly love your museum and I just really want kids to check it out. We'll have a link up there at wccbcharlotte.com. And, and if you happen to be in the in the little space area here in the next couple of days, I wouldn't mind a couple of pictures just to see what it looks like now, okay? Absolutely. I love that museum. I, I used to buy patches at that museum. I mean, that's how much, anyway, listen, we'll have a link up, wccbcharlotte.com, the Museum of Life and Science in Durham. You can check it out. Hey, that's Wilson's World Homeschool. More coming up in just a bit.